1980 was a painful time in the Mohawk territory of Akwesasne, up at the tippy top of the North Country. The community there had taken sides over who should run the government, and there was civil unrest. It even made the national news in the United States and Canada. We were not reporting on ourselves. It was all mainstream media reporting on Native nations in Akwesasne and across the U.S. and Canada. So some people in Akwesasne got together and formed Indian Time newspaper in 1983, a groundbreaking indigenous-run media outlet. And it's been going ever since. But it's struggling financially now and had to suspend publication. What that means in Akwesasne on today's Story of the Day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Pearsall Wealth Management at UBS Wealth Management USA, subsidiary UBS AG, member FINRA SIPC, 1 Broad Street, Glens Falls. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Monday, April 22nd. Happy Earth Day. First up, New York state lawmakers finished up the state budget over the weekend, nearly three weeks after it was due. The $237 billion spending plan restores funding for school aid and includes a package to encourage the growth of affordable housing in New York. Karen DeWitt reports from Albany. The assembly stands adjourned. The New York State Assembly voted on the final budget bill over the weekend, nearly three weeks after the April 1 deadline. The spending plan reverses Governor Kathy Hochul's proposal to change the way schools are funded. That would have resulted in half of the state's school districts receiving less money than they'd expected. Hochul dropped an unpopular plan to eliminate a provision known as Hold Harmless. That guarantees that no school receives less money than it did the previous year, after both majority party Democrats and minority party Republicans objected. The spending plan also includes a housing package that creates a new tax break for developers who include affordable housing in their projects, known as 485X. It also briefly revives a former tax break known as 421A. That expired two years ago, so that some affordable housing projects in the pipeline can be built. The housing package also contains strength and protections for tenants, though not as comprehensive as housing Housing advocates and some progressive Democrats had wanted. Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins praised the agreement and remarks on the Senate floor. It was beyond time to reach a housing deal that addressed head on realities that families on the ground are facing. Although it may not be a silver bullet, it's an imperative step in the right direction. Hochul, speaking on New York City public radio station WNYC's The Brian Lehrer Show earlier in the week, says while everyone did not get all they wanted, she still considers the housing deal a victory. There's always controversy. Everybody wants uh, what they think is the perfect deal, but this is so much more than they had, and I think I I would take that as a win. Hochul, who announced the budget agreement on April 15th, nearly a week before it was actually completed, also won a few key provisions that she'd been seeking. One will stiffen penalties for retail theft, which has become an increasing concern among New Yorkers, including strengthened penalties against assaulting a store worker. The Speaker of the Assembly, Carl Hasty, among others, had opposed the proposal but ultimately agreed to it. And she achieved a change in how a popular consumer-directed home health care program for the chronically ill and people with disabilities is administered. It will allow the health department to contract with an outside entity to administer the program, cutting out around 350 locally-based fiscal intermediaries. The provision was opposed by disabled groups and both Democrats and Republicans in the legislature. The GOP, which holds minority party status in both houses, criticized the Democrats' budget. Senate Minority Leader Robert Ort, who represents the Buffalo area, area, says the housing package falls short and does little for New Yorkers outside of New York City. And he says the new penalties against retail theft are not enough in light of crime issues in the state that he says has led to the deaths of three police officers this month. We're failing, and you ask any New Yorker of all political stripes, and they would tell you we are not doing enough on crime. This state is equally unsafe 
for more people today than it's ever been. The budget also includes $2.4 billion to help deal with the state's migrant crisis and a crackdown on illegal cannabis shops that have sprung up as the state has been slow to license legal retailers for adult recreational marijuana. Lawmakers are now on break until May 6th when they return to finish the rest of the legislative session. In Albany, I'm Karen DeWitt for the New York Public News Network. An anchor media outlet in the Mohawk community of Akwesasne is facing financial troubles. Indian Time newspaper has suspended publication for a month as it restructures and prepares a new business plan. Its goal is to resume publication at least online in the next few weeks. Indian Time was an offshoot of Akwesasne Notes, a groundbreaking indigenous-owned and indigenous-written publication born from the American Indian movement of the 1970s. I spoke with editor Marjorie Gunyandunge Skitters about the history and future of Indian Time. The events that unfolded around 1980 prompted um, writers and artisans and and business people to say, we need to come up with our own newspaper. We need to report locally on what's happening here, um, unbiased, true, and factual, and they went with it from there. And so Indian Time has been going uh, for more than 40 years now. You know, it's such a... uh, a huge part of the community in Akwesasne, along with CKON, the radio station, really serving, um, you know, everybody across Akwesasne territory and beyond. Um, It must have been a real shock to you, to everybody, when you had to suspend the paper for a couple weeks. It is. It is. And, you know, like I'm, I'm an editor. I write. I take photographs. I... I, I proofread. I, I'm scanning media all day long, all weekend long. <laughs> to me, it's heartbreaking um, to to see that this is the position that we're in right now. What, it's um, very sad. Yeah. And and I hear from uh, I have several you know connections in Cornwall, uh, Potsdam, Canton, and we talk about the paper and and I've always heard such good compliments, and they always mention that. Well, we just love how you cover the community and you always shed a positive note on the community. And I think that's that's an important part of the paper is the health and wellness of the community. And we've had some horrible and tragic events happen in Akwesasne, but it's important for the paper to... to take seriously the health and wellness of our community members by portraying them in a positive, inventive, and creative, and innovative light. What has the reaction been from people around the community in Akwesasne? We've received a lot of support, but there still has to be a lot of changes, like how to transfer that support, the verbal support of, I think you're doing well, I hope you don't close into um, actual business practice that can take us forward. Every outlet has sort of particular financial issues, but, you know, there is a sort of larger narrative of um, news outlets really struggling and laying off journalists and things like that. And it just makes me want to ask you about have it, about the importance of having independent journalism in Akwesasne. I think it's vital. It's vital for us to cover the monthly meetings for community members to be able to read something, um, how do I say, independent, uh, non-biased, to read something that isn't written by an employee of the St. Regis Mohawk tribe or written by an employee of the Mohawk Council of Akwesasne. It's written independently. So as much as we're not a huge investigative journal, we are a community newspaper. We try to do our best to cover that. 
Marjorie Gunyandunge Skitters is the editor of Indian Time newspaper based in Akwesasne. The best way to help the paper with its financial troubles is by subscribing. You can subscribe at indiantime.net. We have more news all the time on our website, ncpr.org. Music today by The Curries of Potsdam and December Wind of Akwesasne. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.